Good day everyone, I am Lee Arganal from Intel 471, and I want to take some time to talk to you about Turla and their associated tactics, techniques, procedures, and behaviors. Let's get going. So Munger states that Turla is a cyber espionage threat group that has been associated and attributed to Russia's Federal Security Service, or FSB. They've targeted a wide range and variety of industries, including governments, embassies, military, education, research, and pharmaceutical companies, and I'm sure that's not all of them. They have also created their own tool known as Ouroboros, which is a sophisticated cyber espionage tool used to collect information on Turla's victims. And according to a joint report by the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, or CISA, the National Security Agency, NSA, and other agencies from the US, Canada, and Australia, the FSB was using a malware known as Snake. In the report, and a fun tidbit here, the authors state that it is the most sophisticated cyber espionage tool in the FSB's arsenal, which I think is probably one of the best openings of an article that I've read in a while. Not very good from the good guy standpoint, but you gotta give him some credit. But while the report does have a lot of technical details uh, that I can highlight, Let's focus on one that really stood out, and that's going to be on page 9. Under the persistent mechanism, we see that the malware creates a service named WhereFault SVC, or WhereFault Service, which will execute the attacker's version of WhereFault.exe, which will start the process of decrypting Snake's components and load them into memory once they're on the victim's machine. Now, not the whole decoding and loading into memory part, the reason I found this interesting was that where fault service is named very closely to the legitimate Windows service, where service. Now this version, the where fault.exe, is stored somewhere away from the native directories that you expect them to be in, instead of putting them into the Windows System 32 and the Windows SysWow64 directory, they drop them in the Windows WinS. XS directory. Now, why is that significant? Well, knowing that WhereFault is a native executable, or something commonly referred as a living off the land binary, we know that they can use that name or masquerade that name of their, uh, their malware to blend in with the traffic. So if you are just not really looking too deep into the data and you see WhereFault.exe executing, and you're ignoring the file path, you could definitely miss this. But if you're paying attention to the absolute path and seeing where this version of WhereFall is executing from, you could definitely, definitely get a heads up into this technique. So taking a look at the technique or the sub-techniques in this case, we can take a look and see that masquerading is defined by MITRE as when adversaries may attempt to manipulate features of their artifacts to make them appear legitimate or benign to users and or security tools. So not only are they trying to bypass the users and the security professionals, but they're also trying to bypass security tools. Now, if we drop down the sub techniques, we can actually find sub technique 1036.005, which would match kind of the activity that's going on here. And it's named match legitimate name or location. So let's select that and see what we're taking a look at. And here we get even a more specific definition. So just a real quick wrap up. If you look at minor tech matrix, what you'll see is it'll start with your tactics, which are very broad explanations of goals that the adversaries are trying to accomplish. So under defense evasion, that's the big umbrella term that they use for adversaries trying to get around those security tools and the safety configurations that you have in place. Now, when you take it down to the technique level, it's a little more specific. So we have masquerading, which is the technique being 1036. And that's a little more specific, but still kind of general. But now, once we get to the sub-technique, now we're really being specific. And as you can see, it's masquerading, match legitimate name or location. If we take a look at the other sub-techniques, we can see how they differ, but at the same time, they're still accomplishing the same goal. But doing match legitimate name and location, this is done for the sake of evading defenses and observation. This may be done by placing an executable in a commonly trusted directory, under System32, or giving it the name of legitimate trusted program, example, svchost.exe. And if we think about the article we just looked at, 
where fault.exe was the one in question. So how do we hunt for these and why are we hunting for behaviors and techniques and not just these names existing? Well, let's take a look at the hunt package we'll be using that may be able to explain a little more. So looking at our community hunt package of copying files from native Windows directory for masquerading, we scroll down to the description. We can see that this package is designed to identify when native Windows executables are moved or copied out of their native directory and placed elsewhere, possibly for the purpose of masquerading. Masquerading being the main term here. So let's take a look at the query logic table and see what values we're going to be looking for. And as we scroll down, the query logic table is large here because, and you may have guessed it, there are a lot of Windows native living off land binaries. So as we scroll down, you'll see the large list of living off land binaries that this hunt package is looking for. Now, why are we looking for these specific files? Normally, this is the part where I would say we leave out the variables um, and we don't look for IOCs and we don't focus on file names, but this is a different case. These executables and these uh, living off land binaries, they're going to exist on every Windows box out there. It's not like the adversaries are naming what living off land binaries come with Windows. If anything, they're abusing them. So if they are going to masquerade to be a legitimate process, then they're going to use one of these names. So this is the few times that we can actually focus on a file name and not so and not be worried about it changing from day to day. Because, you know, normally adversaries, they may name their payload 1.bat or 2.ps1 or qwerty. You know, whatever the case may be. Those will change. If the adversary can control it, they'll change it. But if they're trying to blend in, they're going to pick something that exists already in your environment. So what does that look like in Tool? Now that I'm getting off my soapbox, let's take a look in Splunk. Let's take this query and really digest it and see what the data looks like. So as big as the query logic table was, it may look even bigger in Splunk. I honestly have never seen a search box be this large. But once again, that's a product of having to account for all those living off land binaries that exist. Now, the most important part of this query is up here in the first line, in the first actual condition. It says, and not image, which is in Sysmon terms, the child process, is not in any of these directories. So it's not in Windows System 32. It's not in Windows SysWow 64. So once again, what that does, it eliminates the expected locations for these executables to run from. So if we find PowerShell not running from one of these directories, it definitely could seem suspicious right away. So let's take a look at the results that we get. And as we scroll past this gigantic search bar, we see that our first hit involves a living off land binary we all know and love, which is scheduled task.exe. Now, why did this trigger? Well, yes, it's a living off the land binary. And then we can take a look at the image or the rest of the absolute path. Here we see it running from the user's public directory. The user's public directory is actually a directory that adversaries love to abuse because not a lot of people look there because really we don't store things that are important there. So it's just going to, there. it's an easy way to hide things. But if we add some values and fields to look at, we can take a look at the command line arguments and say, you know what? Those actually don't match up. I know schedule tasks okay or pretty well. I've never seen them use a dash F object category equals person or dash GCB dash SC trust up. Now, for all you watching, if you can leave a comment and tell me what actual legitimate tool that is, you get my respect, if that means anything to you. But as we can see from this query and this hunt package that our wonderful content developers built, and they took time to research this and list all those living off land binaries so you don't have to, these are the results you're going to get. And from here, the next thing I would love to do is to take a pivot and figure out, well, you know what? Schedule task is looking a little sketchy coming from the user's public. It's also looking sketchy because the command line arguments don't match up with the parameters that are expected. My first pivot would be to identify what the parent process is executing schedule task or schedule task.exe 
and then walk it back from there and hopefully come to the realization of what root cause is. Thank you, as always, for hanging out and watching today's video. I hope our deep dive into Turla gave you some solid insights into advanced threats and how to tackle them. Make sure to sign up for your free Hunter account so you can stay on top of your threat hunting game. With it, you can access the copying files from native directory for masquerading hunt package and many more community hunt packages that we have to start spotting the sneaky adversaries in your system and finding the bad faster. For more tips and updates, don't miss our next episode. Stay safe out there, and as always, happy hunting.